Hey guys, it's Brandon from Electric Marketing, and today we're going to be going through Sprout Social's publishing tool. So once you log into your account, you have your left nav bar and click on publishing. And now we're going to work our way through everything here. So first and foremost is your calendar. So this is how you can view your old posts, your upcoming posts, and you can either view it as a list, you can view it in week, or you can view it as a month um, and you can filter by the profiles as well so if we only want to look at Twitter messages we can do that if we only want to look at Pinterest we can do that as well and then there's also content types here so maybe we only want to look at messages that have been sent or if you have approval workflow set up you can do it so that you only click on something that needs approval um, and that way you're able to see what you need to go in and actually accept and allow to be published. And you can also do it by tags. So if you utilize tags for your publishing, uh, let's say you, like for instance, when we work with Attack Fuel, they will post a lot of pictures of their sponsored athletes. So if we post a picture of a Spartan racer, then we use the tag uh, Spartan. And that way we can track all of our photos that are Spartan related and make sure that we are tracking like how well those perform versus say posting somebody who is a cyclist. Um, so you can manage that all, all that with tags. Another tool on the left side here is Sprout uh, Q. We don't use Sprout Q. Um, I don't actually like the tool that much. Um, I find it better to just publish uh, from the actual calendar or from over here and using the optimal best time uh, but this is good if you want to set up like a cadence and you just have content go out from like an RSSS feed um, but it's typically not a great way to curate a, a social media feed at least from a design perspective so I typically don't use this now drafts, self-explanatory, if you have any drafts in here, this is where they're going to be going. Now needs approval. Uh, let me show you how this works. So let's say I want to compose a post and I'm just going to use a random photo from a different client. The photo is too large. One second. Now, if you have workflow set up, this is where you will go and select the workflow so that it gets sent to the user who is responsible for allowing this content to get published. So if you're a social media manager and you have a boss who wants to see everything before it goes live, this is very helpful because you can set it up so that he gets a notification or she gets a notification that they need to go and actually approve your work. Uh, they can leave comments in there as well. They can give you feedback that you can immediately act upon. And from an agency, per agency perspective, for us, it's super helpful because with our clients who want to have approval before it goes live, we just set up a workflow and then they're able to say yes or no within the app. So we already have one set up, but let's go to manage approval workflows. And let's create a new one. So let's say boss approval. So step one. Let's say Amy is my boss, and this first step is get Amy's approval. And then let's say Max is the next person who needs to get it approved, and then this would be our sort of simplified workflow. Let's say Amy needs to review it first, and then once she gives it the good to go, then it can go on to Max and he can say yes or no and then ultimately it'll, it'll get published live to whatever date we had selected in whatever time we had selected uh, you can also change it so that users with full publishing permission like myself would be able to skip this so if you have a large team and you want like let's say the ceo to be able to go in here and to just publish out anything without having to go through one of these workflows you can do that by selecting this this toggle now let's not save this because it's irrelevant for us So, just as an example, let's schedule one that actually needs approval. So, let's say he needs to approve this 
let's pick a date far out there because we're obviously not going to send this. Select our Pinterest board. Great, so Saturday, March 28th, 2020, 10 18 a.m., using the optimal times. And test, 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 hashtag test, test. Now it's going to say submit because you're submitting it for approval as opposed to actually scheduling it out. And you can still do submit for approval and duplicate and submit for approval and new. So let's submit. Now needs approval, you can see in here. So if you're scheduled really far out and you have a bunch of content that, content that needs approval, this is a really helpful way for you as a manager to go through and actually go through and edit everything. So you, we can come in here and we can say, we leave an internal comment. So let's say I want to notify Amy, please take a look at this test. So now Amy will get a notification in her inbox on Sprout that tells her to go to this and look at it. And then over here, you can either approve, add a comment, or reject a message. So in this case, let's say we're going to reject the message because obviously we, we don't want to post this on their account. So rejected. So now the message has been rejected. And it's not going to get posted. If it had been accepted, it would go out at whatever time the publisher had specified. So that's a little bit about the needs approval workflow. Um, and again, if you want to set up a workflow, you can either do it by going through here. You can click on Manage Approval Workflows here, or you can go to your account settings. So if you go into your settings here, you'll see approval workflows right there. That's where you can set them up as well. But let's keep hammering through this here. So rejected, you'll see these were rejected. This one was rejected. Actually, let's show you the, the activity here. This was rejected. And here are our internal comments. So make sure there's more spacing, couldn't find the original image. We're able to dialogue as a team in here to make sure that the final piece that we actually publish on social is on point with the brand and using the proper brand messaging. And again, you're going to have these filters on this side here that you can always use to, for when your inbox is really large and you only want to see, like, okay, if I'm the creator, let's only look at that. Or if somebody else was the creator, you can do that as well. Now here is find content. So if we want to find content, search for wine. And you can send all these to your publishing tool. So maybe we want to send out this article from winemag.com to our followers. This is a good way, especially on Twitter, where Twitter you need to be constantly posting and engaging with the community, and it's not, it's not always like selling or positioning your brand. Um, this is a good way to curate content from around the internet and send it out to your following. Now the asset library. This can save you a lot of time, especially if you use things um, a lot. So I only use it for hashtags. But, for example, these are all of our wine hashtags. So whenever we post a wine photo, we typically use these 30 hashtags, and we don't want to keep redoing them every time, so we just drop them in that way. Um, you can view it as a list, or you can view it as a grid. And there are two different types of assets. So there's compose, which is when you're sending out a post, but there's also reply, which is when you're replying to uh, like customer feedback on Instagram, for example. So let's add an asset. Let's say it's an image we're going to add this as an asset let's say future family logo and this is the future family logo and you can manage the tags as well so let's just say I don't know brand logo and add the asset. So now you have a PNG in here, which is an asset that you can use when you're actually scheduling out a post. Um, so when we go through scheduling out a post, I'm gonna show you how to use the asset library and all this in there, but let's make our way through this 
Here you can post via RSS. So if you have an RSS feed, you can set it up through here. Just add in your feed URL and you can check for new posts and it'll automatically send out. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of RSS. RSS. Um, it's hard to control the design and it just looks relatively poor typically. And here are any failed posts. So we currently don't have any failed posts, um, but this is where posts will go if they don't get passed through the API for some reason to the social media accounts. Last but not least, let's actually publish something. So there's two ways you can publish. You can either do it in here, hover over the date, or come up to the top right here and just click Compose. Now here's where you're gonna be able to choose all of your profiles. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest are the four that we have connected for them. You can also connect LinkedIn. You can also connect Google My Business. Uh, there's a few others that you can connect as well, but these are the most applicable. So again, let's just do test. This is where I would add in my uh, Instagram first comment. So here's where you can import from the asset library. So let's pull this up and let's say we want to add in those hashtags and add in that image. So let's attach that. So now that image gets populated and the hashtags as well. And we're actually gonna move the hashtags down to the first comment here. So this will get published as the first comment in Instagram, which is really nice because a lot of social media publishing tools do not do that. Now we can add our Pinterest title as well and choose the board that it's gonna go to. And we can choose where we want the destination URL to go. Uh, typically, I will only publish out to these three by themselves because the way that the link tracking works in Sprout is it doesn't do it for Instagram. So if we shorten this link here, now we have a we have a Bitly account set up, so it's going to track the referral. We already have UTM parameters set up, and I'll go through that in a different video. Uh, you can automatically set up your UTM parameters so that your tracking is streamlined and you don't have to set up new parameters every time you go and post something. Um, and then let's choose a date. Use optimal times. I always use optimal times. Whether or not it works, I, I believe it does, but um, it just makes me feel more comfortable using those five stars. And now I'm going to take it off of a workflow so we don't, we don't need that. Um, here is where you can enter your location. So you can do it for Twitter and Facebook, uh, and you can do it for uh, you got to do it through the app on Instagram. So let's say I don't know, Los Angeles and then Twitter Los Angeles. Let's add a tag. Let's say that this tag is uh, wine tablescape or customer say user generated content. So let's create that tag and we'll save it in there. Again, this is where workflows are done. This is where you can import from the asset library. This is where you upload your media. This is post options. There's some sort of audience targeting. Uh, I've never used this because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Why would I want to limit the scope of my organic reach on Facebook? Um, and then you have your emojis here as well. So let's put some emojis in. And since we didn't schedule for Instagram, I'm gonna schedule and duplicate. So it'll duplicate everything in here, but it'll allow me to set up a new one automatically with whatever was in here. So I just have to select the profile, and now this is where I can go in and actually add those hashtags. So you can imagine how much time this saves because everything is in one centralized platform for all of your social media channels as opposed to having to have like eight tabs open and trying to go back and forth. It really helps as well with like managing customer um, relationships and responding to all the comments. Unfortunately, Instagram's API is pretty tight, so you aren't able to reply to Instagram direct messages through Sprout Social, but you can for almost every other channel. So now we have it teed up for Instagram. Uh, we obviously delete this link because Instagram links don't work and we would schedule that out. And so now you're going to see, okay, we have these four posts scheduled out for Saturday, March 28th. And that is the publishing in a nutshell. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some videos on the UTM parameters as well and how you can track those links. 
And then there's also some bulk publishing tools you can use in Sprout Social if you don't want to go one by one to schedule out your posts. Uh, but those will all come in more videos. We have a full Sprout Social series that I'm going to link to at the bottom in the description. Uh, and as always, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out in the comments or email me. Um, but thanks for watching, and hopefully this was helpful.